In our opinion, gaming chairs are slowly coming out of fashion nowadays in favor of more ergonomic chairs which aren't as flashy but more comfortable. And so we were genuinely hesitant to review the Skiller SGS40 precisely because we have never been fans of gaming chairs ourselves because we felt that the majority of them looked tacky and that they would probably not last in the long run. However, there is one problem with our bias, and that is we've never owned one. I'm Rafael from Hardware Sugar, an anti-gaming chair guy, and I was pleasantly surprised at how different I felt after one month with the Skiller SGS40. Sharkoon Taiwan sent us this review unit, but this video is not in any way sponsored by Sharkoon, and so you'll be hearing a completely unfiltered assessment of the chair. Eventually, we'll move the SGS40 over to our store for our customers to try out. When we last left our viewers, we had just unboxed and given our first impressions of the chair. You can check out the full video of that in the link above. To summarize though, Sharkoon packs this beast in really tight, and the unboxing experience was a lot of fun especially since there was no anxiety involved during the assembly process due to how well the instructions guided me on how to set it up. It took a total of 30 minutes, and that was with me filming. You guys could probably build it faster than me. Oh, and if you end up liking our review, please consider liking and subscribing to Hardware Sugar because it extremely helps us out and we'll be making more chair video reviews as a staple in our tech video lineup. One thing which immediately stood out for me was how massive this chair is. The headrest is tall, the seat is extremely wide, and it looks and feels like sitting on a royal throne. It makes you feel bigger than you really are, and from afar, it truly does make quite an impression. One of the reasons why I don't like gaming chairs in general is because they look tacky. And I'm 33, and I've long outgrown fun style chairs. Thus, why my gaming setup tends to be more on the minimalist side instead of the RGB everywhere type. This gray and black color scheme though blends well with my adult looking setup. The SES40 comes in either PU leather or fabric. If you know what's good for you, regardless of what chair you buy, always go with mesh as a first option. And if that isn't available, then go for the fabric version. Whether it be gaming chairs or gaming headsets, PU leather or fake leather never lasts long. It may feel nice, but when it begins peeling, you are gonna be left with an awkward choice of throwing it out or not because the rest of the chair still works, but is now ugly as hell. We went with the fabric version in gray so that it matches my minimalist desk setup. The fabric is well tailored from the ground up, whether it is the dye color or the stitching. Sharkoon did a really great job to highlight that you are looking at and feeling a premium gaming chair experience. In fact, let's just drop the word gaming and conclude that it's a darn nice looking chair. The stitching at the bottom is well sewn in, unlike cheaper chairs which occasionally use mere staples in order to put the chair together. I have sat in the chair every day with shorts on and I do not find it itchy at all nor does my butt sweat. However, everyone's skin varies and so if you have prior experience with your body reacting irritatingly to fabric, then you may experience the same thing here. Assembling the chair gave me a chance to examine the craftsmanship of each part in greater detail. Remember, the true quality of the product shines the most through the details which shine the least. If you look closely, Sharkoon was able to achieve this shade of gray by combining a light gray and a dark gray thread, thus leading to this impressive contrast. You can see this clearly when you compare the single black threads to the rest of the chair. In short, the gray is not just a single color of gray, a design choice which, in my opinion, is so subtle, no one else except a chair freak like myself would probably notice, but in any case, it is there and I like small surprises like this which seem inconsequential but which make a big impact on the overall design. The base of the chair is made out of thick metal which is cool to the touch of bare feet, a constant reminder that this isn't just some plastic chair. The Skiller SGS40, regardless of anything I say after this, definitely has substance. Even the casters have this unique river wheel design and have a bonus functionality of a locking mechanism. This is great for those who want the option to disable the rolling function of their chair. It even has a satisfying when activated. The SGS40 has a lot of customizable options in the attempt to make it a full ergonomic chair which it should be considering how much it costs. Unfortunately, while you may think it achieves this at first, it stumbles in vital areas which keep us from recommending this chair for everyone. Let's talk about what it can do. It has a race car recline lever on the right side which allows you to lay back almost entirely like a bed. 
I don't know why anyone would do this, but it's there if you are into that kind of thing. This lever also gives you the option to bring up the backrest extremely forward. In short, the reclining function is very adjustable. You can also tilt the chair upwards and lock it in place or opt to just rock back and forth. You may find, however, that it takes a more so than usual amount of force in order to rock. This can be interpreted as either a positive design function, like how a sports car's steering wheel usually offers more resistance to remind you of its power, or you could view this as an irritant because it keeps you from rocking naturally. This chair does not tilt forward. Lastly, let's talk about one of the most important parts of a chair, the armrests. They move from side to side with ease, go up and down, and they even adjust inward and outward. Unfortunately, this is where the chair begins to go downhill for me. As I said earlier, this is a very wide chair and probably meant to fit larger people or people who don't care about the armrests. Something which you, however, must care about. Armrests should be aligned with the same height of your desk and they need to be close enough that you could actually use them when you type on the keyboard. I found it absolutely impossible when I was using the magic keyboard of the iPad or the much larger K70 footprint keyboard. I have a choice of having one arm hovering or both arms hovering. Alternatively, you could just opt to not use the arm supports at all and hide them under the desk. This, however, is not an option for others who have desks with a thick width. Besides, armrests are meant to be used, thus Sharkoon's attempt to make them maneuverable. They, however, cannot be close enough even at their maximum adjustment for my needs. The closest you can get them to be is 22 inches apart without inward adjustment and 18 inches apart if you fully adjust it inward. Another problem with respect to the armrests is that they didn't go high enough to reach my desk. In fairness to Sharkoon though, my desk is a little bit on the tall side and even my Herman Miller Aeron just barely reaches it. However, it is very important that you check the height of your desk before buying any chair so you can avoid some of my previous mistakes. Your feet must not be hovering off the floor as that causes strain on your legs quite quickly due to the pull of gravity. I can indeed lower my chair so that my feet can touch the floor, however then that would make the armrests even further away from being level with my desk. My 7 year old chair which now goes for 8,000 pesos on Lazada has armrests which are perfectly aligned with my desk without the cost of making my legs lift off. In short, you should be able to demand more from expensive chairs, especially if a much cheaper one is able to achieve the basics. Let's talk seating. The overall padding of the chair is on the firm side. If you are used to the experience of sitting on executive leatherette chairs with a lot of padding, then you are going to be disappointed at how firm the seat is. Firm chairs are by no means bad chairs. A lot of people prefer firmness rather than the sinking sensation of a lazy boy when you are working or concentrating on your game. Actually. I can fall asleep in this thing. In my opinion, the firmness of the seat makes me more focused precisely because I'm not overly comfortable. Besides, if you want the sensation of being on a bed, then there's a bed. The seat itself is built to be sturdy and secure as you can see from these heavy duty belts which you usually see on an airline jet seat. I want to emphasize again how wide this seat is. Here's my Kerman Miller Aeron and my trusty 7 year old task chair for comparison. I feel that it makes you sit so far back that you may end up forcing yourself to lean forward to adjust or do something on your desk which would be bad for your back. I would have preferred a more compact seat because a chair which wraps around you ends up supporting your lower back. You may want to invest in a lumbar pillow for extra support so that it pushes you a little forward and takes pressure off your lower back. The SJS40 retails for 16,000 pesos and there is no way around it but this is a substantial amount and before you buy it you must measure your desk and yourself to make sure that you can even use the armrests. Assuming that you can, there are still chairs which are a lot cheaper and more comfortable than the SGS40. However, you can say the same thing about the latest iPhone. A lot of non-flagship Android phones or even an older iPhone get the basics done without needing to upgrade to the latest flagship. But if you are the type who really likes gaming chair designs and wants the best one the market can offer, the SGS40 really makes a gorgeous impression and that is coming from me who never liked gaming chairs. Just make sure not to get the PU leather version as that will peel off very quickly. As I said in our first impressions video, the packaging and assembly felt like a VIP experience and it genuinely made me feel special. 
which it should for that amount of money. It feels like a very sturdy and well-built chair, too sturdy sometimes to a fault that it can be inflexible at times. While the chair might not be the right fit for me, it may be for you. Our next upcoming chair reviews are my Ergonomic Task Chair and the Herman Miller Aeron. Let us know in the comment section below what other chairs you want us to review. We want to give an extremely special shout out to our top fans who helped pay for this new teleprompter. Liam Magnae, Ian Meru, Richard Onkinko, ITX Addict, John Rubin Occia, and Christian Espinosa. Thanks a lot guys. This is going to make producing content a lot faster. Stay safe everyone.